but how can you serve a country that doesn't even appreciate you? Have you taken the IELTS multiple times without success? Are you two, one, or even just half a band away from what the NMC or GMC require in order to give you your PIN or license to practice? Then stop, take a breath, and let us help. You see, here at IELTS Medical, we've given doctors and nurses the tools they need to pass the academic version of the IELTS exam as efficiently as possible. Whether you've reached above 7.0 in three subtests, but can't seem to crack IELTS writing, whether it's IELTS reading that's the thorn in your side, it's okay, we're here for you. Learn more at ieltsmedical.co.uk Hi, my name is George here, and today we have a very special guest. My name is Keisha Nicole Sevilla, and I do uh, YouTube videos. I am a Pinay nurse, and I do vlogs, most especially my journey to become a UKRN. I have been a nurse since 2014, and since uh, here in the Philippines, there has been some... Uh, issues with employment, hindi ka makakahanap ng permanent employment if you're a backer or if you don't have the credentials na alam mong fit for the job. Or even if you do, you still have a challenge looking for a job. So after I got my license, I am working in a BPO company, but I'm working with a medical account. So somewhat it's related to becoming a nurse. And what's good about where I have worked before as a uh, quality analyst is that they allow nurses to practice their profession whilst working in their company. After that, I have decided that I want to pursue my nursing career. So I got a job overseas. I worked as a staff nurse in Saudi Arabia. I worked for almost four years and I left my job January 2020. So it's a few months from today's date because I was really expecting that I'd be deployed in the UK this month, this May. So that's why I left my job in uh, Saudi Arabia and came home February here. The IELTS ranges from, I think, 13,000 pesos something like that, while OEP is 23,000 pesos. So imagine you're a nurse here in the Philippines, saan ka kukuha nun, di ba? So it doesn't end there. There's another test that you have to take. You have to take the CBP. Na may mga expenses ka pa din na issue shoulder mo. Like if you opt to take a review session for the CBP, cost 140 pounds. So that's another expense. So if you decided to uh, process your application on your own, syempre, that's another money out of your pocket. Tapos, uh, syempre, babayaran mo rin yun. And, ano pa ba? Uh, your medical. Case, yes, your medical yeah. pa. And yung uwi yes. mo pa. Yes, yes. That's actually one thing that I am feeling a little bit... Uh, Mm -hmm. Parang hindi ko alam yung feeling ko eh kasi if I stayed in the in my work sa Saudi I am putting myself at risk na makakontak ng COVID although it's one good option for me kasi my husband works in the same company as I do so pares kaming nandoon so we decided na sige since ikaw yung malapit ka ng makaalis mauna ka na umuwi ka na lang muna so I left him there so that's very that's really one challenge that we're facing kasi umuwi ako in the hopes na aalis na ako and then syempre financial wise so that's very challenging for us why we cannot leave the country is because of the deployment ban and what's sad about it is that they have a provision na pwedeng makaalis yung mga healthcare providers provided that they have perfected contracts prior to March 8 
which involves uh, processing their OECs. So if you already have your OEC, then you're free to go. But unlike us, syempre wala pa naman kaming OEC kasi supposedly i-request siya last month kasi alis kami this month. So that's one reason na nagsistop sa amin. Actually, I see uh, Twitter hashtags to you know, to support that uh, this should be abolished, this uh, healthcare worker uh, deployment ban. Because I don't think it's uh, fair for nurses like me. Kasi nandito na kami sa process na aalis na kami, tapos biglang hindi na pwede. So, that's actually not a personal reason why we don't want to leave. Gusto namin umalis. Kasi itong COVID na to, it's everywhere. It's all around the world. What difference would that make if we are there and we're serving here? I think the difference is that we can feed our families. Aside, uh, syempre, diba? if you live here, minsan yung sweldo ng nurses, it's not even enough for the nurse. The offer still stands, so we don't have to worry. We just have to wait for the deployment ban to be lifted. Actually, regarding this deployment ban, medyo half-hearted ako dyan. Pero I'm gearing towards uh, it's not fair to the nurses. Bakit ko ba nasabi na unfair siya? I know this is a time that uh, the country needs nurses. On the other hand, I feel that it's not fair to the nurses who spent so much time, effort, resources. We have been so much. We have been through so much. Yung mga sacrifices natin. Sacrifices we have to do for ourselves, for our families, financial sacrifices. Siyempre, mentally, medyo ano yan, depressing yan. May ibang tao na sinasabi na parang masaya sila na hindi na mapapaalis yung mga ibang nurses, they don't know what we have been through, what we have to endure, what we had to... Uh, yung mga sacrifices natin along the way, hindi nila alam yun. Akala nila pag nurses lagi yung daming pera, hindi nila alam yung iba, scholars, yung iba, pinaghirapan nila yung pag-aaral nila. And I really am not a political person. Wala akong pakialam sa mga political views ng mga ibang tao. But the government, we don't owe anything to the government. Nakarating tayo, we became nurses sa sarili nating mga pera, sa mga magulang nating mga pera, mga working students. We worked so hard. And to be serving in a country who does not appreciate nurses, that's very heartbreaking for me, di ba? Parang, syempre, you live here in the Philippines and you want to serve your country in the best of your ability. But how can you serve a country that doesn't even appreciate you. Ngayon lang nila na-appreciate yung nurses. Ngayon lang na nagkaroon ng pandemic. It has been an outcry of nurses. <laughs> Medyo naiiyak ako. <laughs> Kasi okay. really, oh, yeah. it's really personal. It's really personal. Siyempre. Your message okay. to uh, your fellow nurses and also a message to uh, the people who can help you Okay, so to my fellow nurses, uh, I just want to give a salute because you're fighting the fight against COVID. Just make sure you take care of yourselves as well. People who could help me, most especially the government. Actually, ano bang message ko sa inyo? <laughs> I'm just hoping that you'll hear us out because we know the risk that we are taking. Uh, alam namin yung mga possible consequences if you'd allow us to uh, go to our employments, may it be in the UK or in other parts of the world. We know what uh, battle we're going to. And I know you mean well. I know you mean well by saying or by imposing this uh, deployment ban. But we know, we are fully aware of what the possible consequences are and it's up to us to decide uh, just don't limit our options kasi we've worked so hard and uh, ito yung hinihintay namin eh for the longest time so we are pleading to the government that 
uh, i-lift nyo na yung deployment ban. Kasi if hindi naman talaga suited yung workplace for us, hindi naman namin yan ipapursue. Alam mo, gusto ko lang sabihin kay, I think uh, any uh, country or hospital would be very lucky to have a nurse like you. I can see na parang very passionate ka. Always remember, Manong knows. Manong knows best, but you always do rest when stay.